If you listen to the 3D print community, some will tell you the Ender 3 is dead. Others will tell you it's just a race to the bottom to make it cheaper. But is it actually evolving, staying under $200, and is still a great place to start 3D printing? Let's talk about it on today's Film of Friday. This video is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. This video is sponsored by Creality3Dofficial.com by Comgrow. If you were to go to Google Trends to find out what people are searching for, and you look for Ender 3 or 3D printing, you'll find they're synonymous. The chart shows they're about the same search. People who search for Ender 3 are also searching for 3D printing. It's, it's equal. But if you search for any other popular printer, say the Bamboo Labs X1C, which is really popular right now, it doesn't even show up in comparison. Now, it doesn't mean it isn't popular. It doesn't mean people aren't using it. But there's still a huge audience for a basic sub $200 3D printer to just get started and learn if you even like 3D printing. And that's where the Ender 3 is actually a great option. Now, of course, some will say, which Ender 3? Because there's been a lot of evolution. There's Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2, Ender 3 Neo, Ender 3 Neo Plus, Ender 3 Max. So yeah, Creality kind of made it confusing. But I'm talking the basic Ender 3. The basic Ender 3, the original Ender 3, was under $200, and then they came out with the Ender 2 Pro, which fixed some of the things that people didn't like. And this really became the most popular Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro right here. Well, now the Ender 3 Neo is the evolution of the Pro. Now, I've already made some videos on the Ender 3 Neo, differences between this and the previous Enders, uh, how to assemble it, even how to improve the hot end to make it print higher temperature filaments. But there's always room for improvement, and that's the beauty of the Ender 3s, is you can make it into what you want it to be just by 3D printing different parts. Now, for example, you can buy a side spool holder and snap it on this thing, which I prefer a side spool holder than the top spool holder because it feeds in directly less resistance. But you don't have to buy it. I've showed how you can print your own pivoting side spool holder or just a fixed spool holder that slides right on the rail. And then you get your side entry, and it didn't cost you anything but some plastic and time. But what those little improvement prints teach you is how to 3D print, such as that side spool holder bracket. You want to make sure it's strong enough to hold the spool. You want to make sure that it fits the rail. You want to make sure that it prints flat, that it's not warped. These are all things that you learn by printing, and also how to set it up properly in the slicer, whether you're using Cura Slicer, the Creality Slicer, Prusa Slicer, or even the Bamboo Labs X1C Slicer. They all have Ender 3 profiles inside of them. They all cater to this basic machine because they know a lot of people are going to start here and then maybe move up to a Prusa MK4 or a Bamboo Labs X1C or what other printer is out there that you're considering. But they all start with an Ender 3. So it's still, even other manufacturers recognize this is where a lot of people start and there's nothing wrong with it. You'll also find that 3D printers are a tool. They're not an appliance, they're a tool. And you're going to break things, especially if you're starting out. You're going to break a nozzle, you're going to tighten screws too much. It's just going to happen. So having replacement parts available to you is very important. And you can get Ender 3 parts pretty much anywhere, on Amazon, online, anywhere. And they're really low cost. So to fix your machine, it's easy to do and also very affordable. Now, some things have improved on this Neo that are not on the Ender 3 Pro. One of the things is an auto level sensor. This will actually help level your bed automatically. Once you set it up, it does help. This has a glass bed, which is nice and flat. This can sometimes be warped, which can throw off that first layer and really mess you up. This also has a metal extruder. On this one, it had a plastic arm extruder, and those plastic arms would crack. You'd get slipping of the filament, and you couldn't figure out why your prints were coming out good. This one has a metal arm. So those are the kind of things that they fix. This also has silent drivers on the stepper motors, which makes them quieter, but also runs smoother. So you get better prints than you do on this machine here. So there's been definitely some improvements. It has evolved into a better machine and still stayed under $200. Now, because there were so many under threes made, there's some that come out of the factory that aren't perfect. It's just like everything. And the warranty on these, because you're only paying $200, is not great. So just know you're probably going to have to fix it yourself. Some people just send it back, but there is not a single under three, and I've got a lot of them, there's not a single under three that had a problem that I couldn't easily fix. But in most cases, I took it out of the box, assembled it properly, and it's been printing fine ever since. 
Creality3dofficial.com by ComGrow is an official reseller of the Ender 3 and all Creality products. The Ender 3 Neo is $219, but if you look closely, they have a discount code. And when I ran the discount code in my shopping cart, it saved me $54. So it's a big savings and puts you well under $200. So if you're looking at getting an Ender 3 Neo, check out Creality3dofficial.com by ComGrow. Now, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know I've also recommended this as a great starter printer, the Ender 2 Pro. Now, it's a smaller, lighter, portable printer than this guy here, so it's got a smaller build area, but it's also a great place to start. Now, you can get this machine for about $150 or less, so it's definitely cheaper than this, but it's a smaller build area, so you can't print as big. And it also doesn't have the auto level sensor you have to manually level, but it's easier with this smaller bed, and if you use my Filament Friday E-Leveler, it's even easier. You can get a perfect bed level. And it's got some features that even this guy doesn't have. Belt tensioners to keep the belts tight so there's no wobble in your prints. you got to keep the belts tight. So that's something you may want to add to this. It's also got a drawer here on the side to store tools. You can download designs that will slide right in here and print for this guy. So again, it's just a matter of improving the printers and learning how to 3D print. And both of these are a great place to start. So is the Ender 3 dead? Is it just a race to the bottom? Is it going to get so cheap that they're going to give them away or not produce them anymore? Or even that, the Ender 2 Pro, is it going to go away? I don't know. I hope not. I don't see it that way. I still think a lot of people are buying these machines to get started with 3D printing. They're new to it. It's low cost. They can learn if they even like it. And I'm going to continue to make content to help them get better at 3D printing. And then they can make the decision if they want to move up to a better machine or not. But I think they're going to stick around, and I think the evolution of the Ender 3 just gets better and better. There's definitely more room for improvement. Maybe it'll be the next generation of Ender 3 with a side spool holder and adjusters and the you know tool drawer or whatever else they want to add. But I still think it's a great place to start, and I like that it's continuing to get better and still stay under that $200 price tag. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy through the affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.